Well, hello, everybody. I'm Dale from the Precept Classes in Southern Alabama, and I'm so glad that you have joined with us. We're on Lesson 5 of our current study, God Searches for Our Hearts, Fully Seeking Him, okay? This is actually the last lesson of this course, and uh, this is one of my favorite passages of Scripture, and so I feared that I would not be able to get it all in in the allotted time, so I'm going to split it up into two parts. So this is Lesson 5, Part 1. And in this uh, particular part of the lesson, we were looking at the 20th chapter of Second Chronicles. As I said, one of my favorite portions of the scripture. We would do very, very well to spend a tremendous amount of time in this. What has happened is this. King Jehoshaphat had had peace for a while, and he had sent people out to teach the word of God. He had, had established uh, judges. He had established the kingdom, and the Lord had empowered him to do this. But an enemy rose forth. It was uh, Moab, Ammon, and they came to war. Also, they had Mount Seir with them, who was Edom. A great multitude, a great, great multitude. Well, what did the king do? Well, the king immediately turned his attention, and the translation is set his face toward God. He turned toward God, and he called for Judah to come together and to fast. Well, Judah comes together, and they gather together there in the temple area. Obviously, all of them could not have fit in there, but the king was there, the people were there, and the multitude was there. And King Jehoshaphat lifted up a prayer to the Lord. And this is an amazing, phenomenal prayer. Again, we would do very, very well to pray in this way, particularly for our nation. The things that are happening within the United States of America, uh, it's just absolutely amazing. Even this morning, upon the time when I'm recording this right now, uh, what I posted as being the two poster children for the uh, corruption and perversion that is happening with our nation have just worked out a deal where they can take care of everything that's wrong with Wall Street and the banking, never acknowledging that they are the ones who actually caused this. And so we need to do what Jehoshaphat did. Turn our face to God, fast before the Lord. So Jehoshaphat comes and he prays before the people. He kneels before God and before the people. And he prayed according to what he knew from God's word. He prayed about the situation. He began by praising God. He declared that God is ruler of, over all the nations, that God is powerful and mighty over everything. None of the enemy could stand against him. And he reminded the Lord, he said, God, you gave this land to the people here. He said, Lord, you placed your name here in this temple and you told us if anything happened, if we would come and pray unto this temple in your name, that you would honor it. Jehoshaphat also reminded the Lord that the Lord had not allowed Israel to deal with Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, that they had been there remaining and now they had come against them. And then Jehoshaphat said one of the most powerful things that I believe that we can say, such a rare thing for a king to say this, rare thing for leadership to do this. Sad to say this is very rare within the body of Christ. Leadership in the body of Christ will not do this for the most part. He said this, Lord, we are powerless. We are powerless. And he said, but our eyes are upon you. And so they waited upon the Lord. And then it's described that all of Judah was here. The men, the women, the children, the infants. And they stood and they waited for the Lord. When suddenly out of the midst of the multitude, not from the platform, not from the leaders up there, but from the midst of the multitude, the Spirit of the Lord spoke through one of the Levites. And he said this, do not fear, do not be dismayed. The battle is the Lord's. And then he said, exactly, this is what we're supposed to do. This is the Spirit of the Lord speaking through one of the Levites. He said, I want you to go down against the multitude. I want you to go up against them. But I don't want you to fight. I want you to go. I want you to station yourself. And I want you to watch what the Lord will do. Well, we see that they did exactly that. When they received this word, the king bowed down before God in worship. Uh, the, uh, the worshipers stood up and started praising God, and they had a time of praise and worship before the Lord. They get up the next morning, and they arose and did as the Lord instructed. They went to the enemy. Now, I want you to think through that for just a moment. Can you imagine they got up and they went and they were going to face the enemy, but they were not going to fight. This is a, a, a walk of faith right here, folks. Okay, It is a very much a vivid picture of how we are to live. And so Jehoshaphat told them as they were going along, he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to put your trust in the Lord God and you'll be established. I want you to put your trust in his prophets. In other words, what the guy said, the word of the Lord and we will succeed if we will do that. So a great little phrase right here. The, the king consulted with the people. He talked with the people. We don't know if he initiated this, if the people initiated or whatever. But the king consulted with them, and they said, hey, let's just carry on doing what we were doing last night. So they started praising and worshiping God. They sent the worshipers before the army. They put them in front of the army, and then the people went forth. When they started singing and praising unto the Lord, 
The Lord set ambushes against the enemy. That is what occurs today. When we lift up praise in the Lord, be it within a corporate environment, be it within the individual environment, at the very moment when something's coming against us, if we lift up praise unto the Lord, he literally sets forth and setting ambushes against the enemy. Well, the enemy wound up destroying each other, and you read it there in the scripture what happened. They spent three days collecting spoil from this battle and describes some of the stuff they had, a lot of uh, valuable stuff, garments and things like that. Things that you would normally not associate with an invading army. This was an army that was coming against them, but they were not just coming against them. They were coming to eradicate Judah and to take over and to live there. That's why there were so many, so much spoil there. They had the wagon trains with them. They, they were going to come and kill and move in. That is what the enemy seeks to do with us, to kill, steal, and destroy. And if we will do what we see right here, if we'll lift up praise to God, if we will trust in the Lord, if we will wait upon the Lord, he will do marvelous things. Now, last thought here. The blessing of the Lord came upon them. The joy of the Lord was released upon them. Praise was released unto the Lord. And then an interesting little phrase here. The dread of the Lord came upon all the enemies. The dread of the Lord fell upon the enemies of the land all the way around. Now, there's a little parenthetical thing that happened right here in the last part of this chapter. You think, well, what does this have to do with, with anything? It really shows what was going on with Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was a, a godly king. He didn't always do what was right. Okay, Sometimes he made mistakes. He kept reaching out to the kings of Israel, kept reaching out. The old Rodney King thing, can't we just all get along? Uh, he attempted a partnership with the king of Israel, Ahaziah, who was Ahab's son. And apparently they had initiated this thing, and they built some ships to go to Tarshish. Well, the ships were destroyed, and God sent a, a prophet uh, to Jehoshaphat and said, Hey, I'm the one that destroyed these ships right here. You're not to do this thing right here. And so Ahazia reached out to Jehoshaphat again and said, Well, let's go ahead and try this again. Well, Jehoshaphat had heard uh, the word of the Lord through the prophet. He learned, and he did not proceed with that. And so this is the first part of Lesson 5. Uh, you'll find lesson, uh, the second part here very soon. Um, Think on these things. Reflect upon this thing. Spend some time in this 20th chapter right here and realize that the Lord has told us, do not fear, do not be dismayed. The battle is the Lord's. Again, I'm Dale from the precept classes in Coleman, Alabama, and I'll see you again at part two. Bye-bye.